When he was 10 years old, Damas Celebrarius saw the movie Scarface and knew exactly what he wanted to do with his life, become a drug lord. As a kid in New York, uh, I grew up in Queens, which was had the largest uh, middle-class population of African-Americans. You know, my mother was a school principal. My father was a captain of correction. So it was always like a really well-rounded environment with a lot of love. And then around 10 or 11 years old, uh, crack cocaine started to hit our community in a huge way. You know, when you had a middle-class family, these were not poor people on drugs, but these were people of great influence. I mean, there were some drug blocks that made $150,000 a day. So you could imagine the impression that this had on a young person's mind. His entry into the drug culture came at the age of 11. Walking down my junior high school hallway, uh, a friend pulled me to the side and said, do you want to buy some drugs? You know, I realized quite quickly that that little pill was like a hallucinogen and it had power. And I told him, I said, I never want to use it again, but I'd be very interested in selling it. Instead of, you know, playing around and having fun after school, I started to go to his neighborhood and we started to sell marijuana right in that community. DeMoss maintained a strict business mindset and avoided using the drugs he sold. Instead, he sought the highs that came with status. For me, it was fame, money, and power. So when I went into the drug world, I was really very young, but I was able to outthink even the competition that was around me. So I started to make more money than all those around me, and I fell in love with that. And then very quickly, we realized in order to make the money like Scarface, I had to dip into the cocaine business. And that's when I started to sell crack cocaine. By his mid-teens, DeMoss had adopted the street name Daylight and had become one of the most respected drug dealers in the neighborhood. But as business expanded, so did the criminal charges against DeMoss. When he was 16 years old, DeMoss was sentenced to a military shock program at one of the most notorious jails in the country, Rikers Island. Rikers Island was tough, I mean, you know, people would slice you with razor blades. I fought there almost every other day. And, um, you know, it was one of the toughest things that I ever experienced. DeMoss was released after serving a year. He tried to live a clean life, but the reality of working for a minimum wage hit hard. The only job I was able to get was working at a fast food restaurant. And I'll never forget, I worked so hard that whole week and my check was $75. When I was used to making $1,000 an hour, and unfortunately, I went back into the drug world. It wasn't long before DeMoss violated his parole, but instead of returning to jail, DeMoss fled to North Carolina. At only 23 years old, DeMoss felt the consequences of his drug dreams catching up with him. I mean, to be a fugitive, it has a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of pressure. You know, fear was, just a reality that you, you live with in the drug world. I mean, my whole, from age 11 on, I had to figure out in seconds, was someone coming to buy from me? Was someone, someone coming to rob me? Was the person coming towards me an undercover cop? I mean, 30 of my friends were murdered in the drug world. DeMoss grew increasingly paranoid and fearful but a run-in with another drug dealer's girlfriend, who was known for being a witch, put DeMoss over the edge. She popped out and grabbed my arm and did some kind of spin move. And next thing I know, hours later, I started to lose my mind. It was so scary. I can feel this overwhelming presence of evil and darkness inside of me. Some neighbors heard about DeMoss's distress and offered to help in one specific way. Three elderly women, three praying women that ran a Bible study together had asked my girlfriend, could we pray for him? Do you think he would allow us to pray for him? They said, are you ready for prayer? I said, yes, and they just started to pray for me. The power of God hit me so hard, I really felt free, and I really felt liberated 
And I really felt the love that came from heaven. And my eyes were open in a way that I knew I could never go back to the world. Eventually, DeMoss completely left the drug business. When I realized that Jesus gave me my right mind back, I said, I'm going all out for God. Then I started to seek, where's a church I could go to? There was an instant attraction to talk to God and to read his word. Nine months after turning his life around, DeMoss felt led to return to New York and face his past. He turned himself in and confessed his crimes, knowing that he could face at least seven years in prison. But when he stood before the judge to be sentenced, her response was surprising. She said, the man that I'm looking at looks so different than the person that I'm reading about. She said, I'm gonna do something I've never done. I'm gonna release you, continue doing what you're doing, and I never wanna see you in this place again. Damas honored her request and never returned to crime. Today, Damas is married with two daughters and is a pastor in New York ministering to the same streets where he used to sell. He has written a book called Street God to tell others about the difference Christ made in his life. The same boldness and energy that I used to give to the dark world, I give so much more now to Jesus Christ. I left from being a street God to serving a God who loves the streets. And I want anybody that's watching this that feels like they're trapped to know God can turn that situation around.